Hi everyone. In the immunology topic, we are going to discuss about general functions of immunoglobulins. We had gone through the structure of antibody or immunoglobulin and the types of immunoglobulins in different parts. Now, in this part, we are going to mainly read about the functions of immunoglobulins that means including all the five types of immunoglobulins functions in general we are going to discuss now the main function of any immunoglobulin is to protect the body against as the invading microorganisms that is pathogens and this protective role is going to be carried out in two different ways how many ways in two different ways what are they by that means the in antibodies by direct attack on the invader which one is the invader nothing but the invading microorganisms and the second one is by the activation of a complement system so by these two uh, ways the antibodies or immunoglobulins are going to protect us from the invading microorganism one is by the direct attack that means antibodies are directly attacking the microorganisms and the second one is they are going to activate the complement system and those complement system and the antibodies together will destroy the invader okay let's see uh, what are these things okay in detail now the first one that means antibodies are going to directly attack the invading agents so the immunoglobulins which are basically bivalent that means they are having the two antigen binding sites so we call them as bivalent so obviously binds to an antigen isn't it which are mostly provided with multiple antigen sites and inactivate them in any one of the following ways we are going to discuss uh, several types of the ways in which the antibodies are going to invade the antigen and they are going to neutralize them or by removing them so the first foremost one is the agglutination so that means how the antibodies are going to inactivate the antigens or the first one is agglutination and the second one is precipitation third one is neutralization then fourth one is lysis then opsonization then tissue fixation then coming to uh, selective transport and that's all by direct method it is going to target the antigen by these various methods let's start with the agglutination what is an agglutination agglutination is a process of clumping of particulate antigens for example you can take the red blood cells or the bacteria by the specific immunoglobulins it can bind to them and it is causing an agglutination and this this agglutination is brought about by linking of the particulate antigens okay by two fab fragments of the immunoglobulin molecule and as igm is having 5 to 10 binding sites because it is a pentamer isn't it that we discussed in the types of immunoglobulins we know that igm is a pentamer and having obviously 10 binding sites and that's how it is a very effective uh, uh, efficient agglutinating antibody molecule and a study of rabbits uh, immunoglobulins has shown that igm antibody is to be 22 times more active than its igg antibody and uh, bringing about the bacterial agglutination so because of uh, its uh, large size, IgM is most confined to the blood serum and thereby it has an important role in the protection. Okay, so basically uh, simply telling agglutination is a process of clumping of particulate antigens with a specific immunoglobulin is going to be called as agglutination. Okay, so uh, in detail about this agglutination types of uh, all antigen antibody reactions we will discuss in another part so this is a first type by which directly the antibodies are targeting the antigen and removing them then coming to the second type is precipitation that immunoglobulins combine with soluble antigens for example such as tetanus toxins and the complex thus formed so here you can see these are the antigens and these are the antibodies and here is a 
complex uh, they form becomes insoluble okay and then precipitate so here this is a real picture where you can see here is a precipitin band okay and that's how the toxin is made inactive by these antibodies then coming to the neutralization obviously the name itself is indicating neutralization the antibodies uh, cover the toxic sites of the antigenic agents and thus neutralize them so here are the toxin molecules uh, and if these toxins are going to attack the cells and cells get damaged but now what the antibodies are doing they are going to cover all the sites of these toxin molecules such that they cannot bind to the cell and our cells are being protected so this is how the same thing happening with the viral neutralization also that means when a virus particle enters into the body so these antibodies will go and block the sites of those uh, virus particles and not allowing the cell to get damaged so this is how the antibodies are protecting our cells by a method called as neutralization then moving to the lysis so some potent antibodies are occasionally, not oftenly, occasionally capable of direct attacking membranes of cellular agents and thereby causing the rupture of those whatever the antigens that entered. The next important uh, one is opsonization. So here the opsonization is going to be of uh, immunoglobulins specific for particulate antigens such as bacteria play an important role by coating the surface of the bacteria and that bacteria are going to act as a opsonin and making the antigen more susceptible for phagocytosis and this process is termed as opsonization. Opsonization is nothing but when an antigen enters into the host our antibody is going to label it that this is not relevant to us that is it is a foreign particle. Once it is going to have such a label, that means when an antibody is going to bind and that is going to be called as opsonin. And now this opsonin can be easily exposed to the macrophages and they will undergo the phagocytosis process. Okay, So this is how the antibodies are involved in causing the opsonization. Then coming to the tissue fixation. The ability of the immunoglobulins to attach to tissue cells is a well marked feature which is responsible for various hypersensitive reactions in human beings. So you suppose IgE antibody is going to bind to a membrane of uh, any BAS cell, BAS cell, then obviously which leads to the degranulation of those cells which is a beneficial but same time those cells are being ruptured. So that's uh, how it is going to be of tissue fixation involvement. Then coming to the selective transport. So what is this selective transport? means uh, in humans out of the five human globulins that means we had five types IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD and IgE out of all these uh, five types the only one globulin that is IgG is transported from mother to the fetus through placenta and this or IgG will give the passive immunity to the newborn baby in the new environment to which uh, it is going to be exposed and now the newborn is thus passively protected for about uh, six to nine months by then the active immunity sets in okay before the active immunity of the baby is going to set in the passive immunity that was going to be passed from the mother to the baby through the fetus is going to protect the baby until six to nine months okay so the only immunoglobulin that is selective immunoglobulin igg is being transported from the mother to the baby and then one more is there that is iga is also a selectively transported one and it is going to be selectively secreted in the saliva mucus secretions of the respiratory and even the digestive tracts also and this iga one more important it is present in the cholesterol that is mother's milk okay that's how this is also protecting the baby from the gastrointestinal infections and the pathogens and the normal flora of gastrointestinal tract so this is how the antibodies are also having one of the major function is selective transport so this is how obviously we are having the seven types of uh, functions of immunoglobulins where the immunoglobulins directly attack the 
invaders the first one is agglutination that we had gone through then second one is a precipitation then we have gone through the neutralization then lysis then opsonization then we come to the selective transport okay so these are the things that we have gone through and even the tissue fixation so here is the seven types we have gone through and then the immunoglobulins are also going to be involved in this uh, protecting from uh, protecting us from the invaders by an indirect manner by which by the activation of a complement system so it's an indirect manner the immunoglobulins are involved let's see what are those things so where the complement so sorry here the complement is a collective term to describe a system of about 20 different proteins many of which are enzyme precursors so we are having a complement system in which we had of about 20 different proteins and they are all going to act as a enzyme precursors generally these enzyme precursors that is a 20 or complements are inactive in condition but they can be activated by the immunoglobulin when in association with the antigen for example when an antigen enters into the body our antibody is going to respond and it bites to it now this complex is going to activate this complement system okay now together it's becoming a antigen antibody complement system now this complement get activates and it is going to produce some sort of effects in protecting the body by destroying the antigen let's see how by activating the complement system the immunoglobulin promotes the following functions what is the first function so here we are having four types opsonization and phagocytosis then lysis and then chemotaxis and activation of mast cells and basophils this opsonization mechanism can also be done by the immunoglobulin itself at the same time it can also be done with in association with this complement also let's see one of the products of classical pathway is c3b so it's a one of the enzyme precursor which strongly activates the phagocytosis okay by both neutrophils and macrophages we have learned this uh, uh, function of uh, neutrophils and macrophages in the cells of the immune system topic there you can go through about these two in detail now the neutrophils and macrophages are going to have a function called as phagocytosis and these are going to engulf the bacteria attached to the antibody and this whole process is called as opsonization so here in the figure you can look at this so it's an extracellular bacteria entering into the cell and now our antibodies are going to recognize them and binding to it and now this complex is called as opsonin and now this opsonin is going to have the activation of this c3b complement which initiates the phagocytosis mechanism in the cell now this large uh, that is the ingestion by the macrophage or the neutrophils is going to occur and what is happening inside this macrophage so that is going to be taken as a phagosome and this phagosome is going to combine with the lysosome which we call together as phagolysosome containing of hydrolytic enzymes and lysozyme enzyme will break this bacteria and that is going to be broke down into the components and they are being released as a soluble debris by the method called as exocytosis so this is how the antigen that entered is going to be removed by the process of opsonization and phagocytosis with the help of this complement system and then coming to the lysis so this is how the breaking one of the most important of all the products of uh, complement cassette that means the total proteins is the lytic complex which is a combination of uh, multiple complement factors known as c5b6789 this is a complex okay complement system a protein and this is going to have a direct effect on rupturing the cell membranes of the invading organisms such as bacteria that means this complement is going to directly attack the bacterial cell membrane and it will lyse it so that is a second type uh, function then coming the chemotaxis some of the complements like C5A and C3A going to cause a chemotaxis. That means they can release some sort of a chemical substances 
of neutrophils and macrophages which result the migration of a number of these cells to the regions of where there is a antigen antibody complex accumulation so when an antigen enters antibody will go and bind to it and it will give the siren so who is going to give the signal to uh, that other things to come that is C5A and C3B is going to give the signals to both the neutrophils and macrophages by sending the signals in the form of some chemicals which is going to be called as chemotaxis. Once these neutrophils and the uh, macrophages come in contact they will undergo with opsonization and, and phagocytosis. So that's how this is going to be the another function. And then the last is the activation of mast cells and basophils. The fragments such as the same C5A and C3A are also going to activate the mast cells and basophil cells. So here are the mast cell and basophil resulting in their degranulation. As a result, they release some sort of a products called as histamine okay, and several other substances which through different ways immobilize the antigenic agents and produce inflammation and not that means these basophils and master uh, mast cells get degranulated and releases these compounds called as a common mediators or mast cell mediators they will block this antigen not moving throughout the system they will block it and that blocking is going to be resulting called as inflammation okay so this is all about the functions that is going to be uh, seen with the immunoglobulins either by the direct method or by the indirect method by the activation of complement system okay so this is all about the functions of immunoglobulins or antibodies thank you